So this will also be available on YouTube afterwards. So um, I think we've got like a time. I don't know the exact setup. At some point, it will be wildly available, <laughs> um, which is exciting. Uh, so more people can hear about your topic and um, get enthused by it. That's the important part. Brilliant. Yeah, it's been a full unpack day. There's some really, so track three, which is obviously the track I look after. has been awesome, obviously. Okay. Uh, it's got nothing to do with me. But it's been a really, I think, a really fruitful day and giving lots of like things for thinking and, and mulling over and then hopefully applying as well to our lives. Good, good. I hope this session adds to that. This is a really I'm cool sure it will. conference. Um, it is going to be a bit weird watching myself because it is so, pre-recorded. Right. In which case, I would recommend just turn off your your own camera now uh, when you're ready uh, and your uh, microphone so you can cringe, but people don't see you cringe <laughs> with yourself. That's always my way of coping with it. Brilliant. I think we can make a start if you like. All right. Well, then good. It looks like we've got some, we've got nine pairs of eyeballs in on this session. So welcome, welcome. Be Way to be creepy. <laughs> yeah. Come and say hi in the chat and ask all the questions. Yeah. Please say hi. I want to know where you're at. I want to know what you're doing, who you're with. I basically want to know your life stories. So share in the chat. Um, while we play, we're going to play my little video here in a minute. So I'll have time to read um, your chats and respond, and then we'll have time for questions at the end. Um, if you caught uh, what we were talking about at the very beginning, I do host um, Semrush's uh, Twitter chat, which happens in 45 minutes as well. So if you have time um, or want to multitask, please feel free to follow the hashtag Semrush chat on Twitter um, starting in 45 minutes, because I'll be multitasking too. I'm going to be in the chat, but I'll be an hour chat here in the conference too. Um, so we can, we can have some great conversations because that's what it is all about. And especially if you just caught uh, Joe's presentation, which was right before mine about building relationships, this is a tremendous segue. Joe and I were like, this <laughs> on the same plane of course we totally plan this uh, but this is a great session to have after hers because we're going to be talking about how to uh continue that conversation and continue those relationships but how we can use our data our existing data to build those relationships online um a quick introduction on me you'll see oh, you know what i shouldn't even because it's in my little video and <laughs> you guys aren't here to learn about me you guys are here to learn stuff so i'm gonna go ahead and share the video we can chat in the chat um for as long as you want and um i'll see you on the other side so let me get me let me get this video up and running brilliant thank All you right. so much diana <laughs> Um, okay, how do we get the U here? Let me get the YouTube thing. There yeah, that's it. Well done. <sighs> can I can click things. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Figure of course. it out. You're a capable, <laughs> independent woman. You can <laughs> click things. <laughs> so that was odd, um, watching myself <laughs> present to you guys. Really uh, good pair, um, though. Love it. That was really fun, though. So I, um, I'm, I'm. You can tell I'm a pretty animated person. <laughs> What I really enjoyed is how I, th I assume you recorded this with Loom, so you kept kept on moving your bubble. I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, Sam Rush is covered up. Oh, our hashtag's covered up. Oh, this. <laughs> yeah. So I was trying to pay attention to to my face. <laughs> um, but I love Loom. It's a great it's a great screen recording software. So. Lots of really cool uh, tidbits, I think, going back to that presentation. Lots of really great um, uh, questions coming up in the chat, too, so we can come back and revisit. Mm. Joe asked a really good question around um, if I had used these strategies myself on and like what kind of results I had seen. And yeah, I've absolutely used this myself on a variety of different businesses, not just Sunrush. Um, hmm. The job, the job I had before I worked at Sunrush, I worked for an agency, a marketing agency, and I worked with a variety of different clients, um, including like a sunflower maze and oh, wow. a dentist and um, a startup a custom clothing business. And so it was really fun. And I use I use the audience data for a lot of my strategic planning. So in coming up with 
like what kind of visuals, what kind of key visuals I wanted to include in my social content, the initial plan, you know, when you're just starting out with con like social content from a fresh, from a fresh start, you don't, you haven't had any experience to test things yet. And that's one thing we didn't talk about in the presentation was testing. And we can talk about that here if we want. But if you're just starting from scratch, then this audience data is a really great place to start your planning process. Uh, so that's what I would do. So I would go in and then I would find out this information about the people visiting their websites or people already interacting with them on Facebook and bring that to my designers. And we would come up with some key visuals to plan our content around. Um, you know, if we're planning the visuals for like a Facebook ad campaign or a Twitter ad campaign, then I would be part of the design process there because I had the data insights into the, into this audience. And we've, I think one of the thing that's, one of the big things that's come out of this pandemic too, from a marketing perspective is the fact that we need to stop marketing for marketing's sake and we need to make these connections with human beings and people. So going back to Joe's presentation that just wrapped up about mm -hmm. build, building relationships, this is part of it. And this is part of showing the person behind the brand um, that we're not just in it for the money and the leads. Like we actually really do want to connect people to people and person to person. And we're humans behind the brand. And we understand that you're humans coming into our brand and we value that. So this is a great way to showcase that you have taken the time to get on your audience's level and connect with them about their pets, about Eminem, about whoever they're interested in, Walmart, Tasty, whatever. This is your opportunity as the marketer to get on their level. Perfect. I think uh, Juliana had another question to confirm we need to set up audience data first in GA and yes. then wait three months and then report to clients. So good, good two part question here. So yes, yeah, so audience insights is not automatically set up in Google Analytics. And I was so I mentioned in the chat too. I just launched my own personal website and I'm on the latest iteration of Google Analytics. Um, so I'm like, figuring out where this information is in Google Analytics. And it seems to be by default turned on in the new iteration of Google Analytics. But I just launched my site on Friday, so it hasn't even been up for a week. And I don't I don't have any of the interest data yet. So when I was working on the client side, so clearly SEMrush has been around for a long time. We had plenty of data by the time I got on board. But for clients that I was just starting out, I, I work in quarters. I do everything with clients in a three month turnaround time frame because SEO is slow, data is slow, adjusting your strategy for that data is a process. So I work in three months. That's just my personal way of doing things. I work in three month iterations. So if you're coming to a client who doesn't have the data yet, so say maybe they don't even have a website yet, um, which is hard to imagine, but it does happen, um, then you can use their you can use the existing data maybe in their Facebook page, or you can use the market research data that comes from SEMrush and that market explorer to understand the industry a little bit better before you have the actual data. And you can start the strategy there and then adjust the strategy as you get your client's actual data coming in. And that's all part of it too. We're revisiting data anyway. We have to, because it's going to change. Um, think about how different our data was three years ago compared to two years ago, compared to last year, compared to how it's going to turn out now. Like mm. the pandemic really changed even our data. So, um, you, as a marketer, you need to be revisiting it anyway. So it's just part of our workflow. <laughs> how um, we used to get data if they don't already have data and you can use tools like market Explorer to get it in advance. So SEMrush is obviously a global brand. So one of the questions that was sort of in the back of my mind is how do you unify connecting with that many different cultures and backgrounds? Good question. And so we have and we have the benefit of having multiple te of a team that can work in different regions. Um, but if it's just you, yourself and I, <laughs> I would say prioritize because you can't be all everywhere all the time and you can do again your data is going to show you where you're already very dominant and where opportunities are so maybe you don't need to focus on the u.s or english speaking companies because you're already getting a lot of traction there maybe your focus needs to be somewhere else 
So prioritize. That would be my advice if it's if a small team. <laughs> and then especially if it's in multi-language. Um, so one of the things that I think is people forget is that actually if you've got core parts of your website translated into a different language that should also reflect on your social channels because you're really Absolutely. missing out on on people knowing that you have language cap capabilities which mm -hmm. especially when it comes to b2b i think is a really big deal because businesses like having a native speaker on the other mm -hmm. side. And if you don't, you know, you have to sort of speak to your strengths and actually also be smart about what, how you present those things. So um, I think the localization has to be sort of form part in it. But I think you're completely right in saying you just need to prioritize. And, and one thing I think I'm really passionate about, I don't know whether you agree, is that sales <laughs> and marketing are the same team. They play on the same team. There is no sales made us do yes. this. You know, it's like there is there is a it's a Venn diagram, isn't it? There is overlap. And I think there has to just be the brands that do it really well, you can tell that their sales and their marketing is really aligned. Yeah. And there's a feedback loop, right? Because both and especially I think social media teams too, because we are also on the front lines interacting with our audience, just like the sales team are. So there's a really strong mm -hmm. feedback loop that can happen between the two teams to make both stronger. Absolutely. Um, on going back to your international point though, keep in mind there's a difference between translation and localization. Mm -hmm. And that's the same difference as if you're even an English speaking, you're a native English speaker, but you're you're targeting somewhere in North Carolina, but you're not from North Carolina here in the United States. There's a difference between speaking at North Carolinians and speaking as a North Carolinian. There's those colloquial mm -hmm. terms, there's the regional terms, there's slang and things like that. And translation and localization for international is the same thing. You could, yes, you can use Google Translate and get the book version of your tweet, or you can go a step above and get someone, get a native speaker and get them to actually localize it. So if international is your focus, efforts need to be spent on that because you're, you, again, this is all about connecting with the audience and you will lose them if you're, speaking as if you're in, you know in french 301 at university as an american like they're going to be able to tell your mm. <laughs> textbook or using google translate <laughs> so exactly. a lot can be lost in translation and that's why you should localize absolutely as a native <laughs> german speaker living in the U uh, uk i can appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> well and that is a lesson i have absolutely learned from semrush um, mm. Because I I've worked with global brands in my previous jobs, but not at this scale and not at this not as ingrained and not as a content creator. So this was a real it's a really good lesson in my year any year and a half here so far. So amazing. Well, I think uh, we've answered all the questions. We had a nice chat. I'm aware that you have to scootle off to your Twitter <laughs> chat, which is fab and everybody should join it at least once in their life. Thank you so much for taking the time to record that fab talk. I'm really looking forward to seeing what sort of resonance we get and the feedback we get about this. And thank you. Thank you so much, Diane. And I, I am so ha happy that I've finally Met, like seen you and met you I feel like <laughs> I feel like this goal of mine has been absolutely done and I'm here here with um pledge that I will be better at actually coming back to SEMrush chats <laughs> <laughs> we have plenty planned through the end of the year and you guys know Amazing. that the, the topic changes every week so it does it does and Say hi when you're there, because I'll be there too. I will. So <laughs> I will. I'll just send up like a silly photo of me or something and be like, hi. Yay. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Wonderful. So it. have a lovely afternoon. Um, obviously, you can stay here and chat to guys. That's not a problem. And people, not just male people. Um, and I'll <laughs> speak to you soon and have a lovely after uh, morning. Morning. It's morning <laughs> Thank where you, you guys. Are. Yeah, thanks for attending. And if you have any questions, feel free to message, message me on social media. And hopefully I'll see you somewhere in the SEMrush chat. <laughs> Brilliant. Speak letters.